What's up, people? Welcome back. We have today a. Uh, we don't know what this is. We we're don't just know hanging what this out. Is. Yeah, we're just. <laughs> but this is uh, Open Mind Marriage and Family Therapy. Yes. LLC. 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 No. Uh, S Corp. S Corp. It's yeah, a corporation. It's a corporation. Yeah, you big time in the. That's right. You know, you gotta go big. Little, Mine's a measly little LLC. <laughs> well, eventually, when you're ready, you'll you'll blast off. Okay. That's Dreams to reality. <laughs> What's up? It's a little kingdom, <laughs> but it's hard. We hard. I mean, we got little, we got ferocious beasts in our, in our hood. That's right. He's a protective one. Yeah. This is Huitzilopochtli. <laughs> this is my, my little road dog, my homie. He is Sonny. So his actual name is Huitzilopochtli, uh, which is the Aztec uh, god of war, the sun god, the deity of the Aztec people. And uh, he is my son. And he's also my son. <laughs> well, and you're continuing your cultural heritage with, with right. your adoptive child. <laughs> <laughs> he's been growing, though. Yeah, he's getting big. Yeah, he's fluffy as hell. He Look at his hair. Ball. Hmm. He's a little furball. I know. He loves you. The furriest of furs. <laughs> he loves you because you feed him so much. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a growing boy, for sure. Yeah. He has to eat. Yeah. He has to eat. So how you been, Danny? How's life? How's business? How's uh, everything? Well, you know, life has been crazy as usual. We're navigating gonna... through, through some things. Um, my babies. And uh, just, I really, you know, why we're here is to bunker down and to get focused yeah. on career stuff and um, close up some chapters yeah. um, of business and life and things like that and really kind of getting grounded and clear on what this next adventure is going to look like um, business-wise, personal-wise. Um, yeah, I have a lot of things I'm trying to get through. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that you say that because, like, um, I was, like, thinking in my head, like, what are we doing uh, this weekend? I, I called it a retreat. <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of a retreat. It's a it retreat, is. you know, and a retreat has a lot of meanings to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, there's a lot of symbolism and meaning behind the words and stuff. So people have like, you know, uh, church retreats yeah. where they go away for a weekend and they get yeah. like immersed yeah. in the spirituality of their religion. You know, there's war retreats when you're in a battle and they call retreat. I mean, it's go back and, you know, regroup yourself because you're losing the battle sometimes. Or maybe it's not even that you're losing the battle. It's a strategical play by the person in charge. Without, there might be soldiers thinking they're winning, but their leader is saying retreat because he sees things that they don't see. Right. So the repositioning and in combat when you're actually fighting in order to hit something you have to retreat in, in order to gather the, the the strength and the momentum to hit something so uh today has a lot of meaning this whole weekend has a lot of um, purpose and meaning to me personally for what i'm doing with uh my business my life mm -hmm. my career my everything right and uh you fit perfectly into that uh, vision that I have. So, you know, first I want to thank you for being here, yeah. <laughs> you thank know, you. for being present and, uh, for the knowledge and wisdom that you give. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And vice versa. I mean, I was just telling him last night, like his drive and his commitment to getting some work done really inspired me and pushed me to be my word and to be committed and to get work done. And I think yeah. that there's this accountability component that, you know, if we talk about business, we need, right, to support each other, to hold each other accountable on certain things, or even just being an extra boost of energy when you, you, you want to give up or you just want to tap out. You yeah. got to push yourself to go the extra mile. Yeah. And um, I think retreat is the perfect word for this weekend because we've also allowed ourselves to, like, even this morning, enjoy the grass. Get yeah. rooted into the grass and, like, get down with the dog. and Sunny loved it. Yeah, get <laughs> present to the views and drink our coffee and just hang out. And it was... Yeah. Well, it's beautiful up here. Yeah. You know, we're, we're literally on the top of the uh, hill in uh, Ventura. Ventura. Uh, overlooking the ocean, we're on top of the mountains, we're the last oh. house on the hill. And then, and you know, I asked Daniel, like, how much is this place? You know, I, I'm thinking I want to buy something like this because mm -hmm. it's a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful property. Property, you yeah. know, and it's spacious and it's got like this open concept. And I like the decor and and everything. Like, 
all these uh the glass it's got like these electronic uh um blinds that i really liked that Danny broke the first second we got here. I'm just kidding. I see <laughs> and then he actually <laughs> I fixed, fixed it. Because you know, I'm a man. Yeah, I fixed it. Yeah, so, you know, it was never broken. <laughs> it never broke, you know. <laughs> My feminine needed support. For the, uh, for the Airbnb, I don't charge this extra $3,000. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so she looked it up. She had actually already looked it up before I even I asked mm. her. And you're like, oh, I do that before, you know, even. It goes to yeah, and how much was it again? 3.2, I think, million. 3.2 million? Yeah, 3.8 between there. I can't remember the action symbol. Yeah, but. and um, to people, that might sound like a lot of money, because to me initially, I was like, fuck, 3.2 million? Like, I was like, never mind. <laughs> you know, the Mexican in me was like, And then I was like, why mind. not? There's right? this funny uh, Joe, oh, not Joe Rogan, um, George Lopez, a bit that he does about. Uh, Mexican when they get like an expensive <laughs> they see an expensive tag mm -hmm. they like make a big deal out of it yeah. while like white people don't they're no, like yeah. hmm okay I need to check my FICO score yeah. and see if I could <laughs> and he's like in Mexico like nice never mind <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Well, I think that's what kind of, kind of we talked about that too, that mentality of being yeah. stuck in the bubble. Yeah. And having to break out of that bubble. Yeah, to have it's, a uh, it's a paradigm. It's a paradigm. You know, yeah. and uh, I feel that, you know, especially like in our culture, uh, the Chicano culture, we struggle. We come from like poverty mm -hmm. and they have this mentality sometimes of like something's unachievable, you know, because it seems so far. And I still have that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I challenge it, you know, and I'd be like, you know what, I'm gonna fucking get some shit like this. And at one point, it doesn't seem like a lot because I bet mm -hmm. you at one point this house was probably, or this property was like $1 million. And or people less. back then were like, oh, that's way too much. Yeah, I looked it up. It, 2017 was when they purchased the yeah. property. Yeah. And the cool thing about property is that, you know, the value continues to grow, mm -hmm. you know, it appreciates. So that's the long term play, real estate. Yeah. And I like that part so that every time I go to a new place, I look up the cost of the house. Yeah. And then I like when I get to new places, I go, oh, I like this concept. I'm going to have this for my house. <laughs> I'm going to add this. I don't really, maybe not well, this Well, I'll tell you out. this much. I have a lot of rich friends and a lot of wealthy friends. Well, and one thing that they all have is multiple properties. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know? So, so there's, it's a, about. there's a lot of uh, value in real estate, not only as far as uh, getting money from it, having assets, but also there's a lot of tax breaks. There's a lot of ways you can maneuver money without having to give it all up to the government. Of you course. Know? So, yeah. um, you know, for people that are on game, they know what's going on. You know, they, they invest in stuff. It's investments. That's yeah. What it is. So I think that's going to be probably one of my long term plays um, as I start to build my kingdom. You know, is uh, I want some land. I want to be able to fucking roam around in the dirt like I was today in the morning, you know? <laughs> well, and I want properties in different locations, like like different countries and Damn. different... Just because you, you want... I look, I like to vacation. I like, you know that, yeah. right? I like to... I work hard and I get to treat myself as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I splurge on my experiences. You know, you always yeah. ask, what do you want, you know, for a birthday or whatever? I want an experience because that's more valuable for me. So going off and traveling and having yeah. a place where friends can come... And like have community, I think that's yeah. I think the at dream. the end of the, at the end of your life, you're not gonna remember the Gucci belts. No, you're gonna remember not at all. the vacation with your mom and your dad, mm -hmm. and you know the experience of whatever skydiving with someone you cared about or love. Mm -hmm. You know, Sonny sleeping right here overlooking the ocean. Or him feeling grass for, for the, the first, first time. time. Yeah, those like... those precious moments that uh, are, you know... They're invaluable. They're, they're invaluable, yeah. That's what matters the most. And I think, uh, you know, sometimes we get lost in the rat race of chasing yield dollar. And we forget to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm the same way, like... You know, I'd rather spend money on things that are going to bring me experiences, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and I think also, too, the importance of this trip is to just get us out of our environment, get us out of that routine, just being in that same space. I work from home, so, yeah. you know, I'm a telehealth therapist, so I work from home, I do my nose from home, and yeah. sometimes that gets stagnant and you feel stuck, and you get distracted by other things and so yeah. this place really has helped kind of bunker down and focus a little bit more yeah i mean um 
I was talking to my friend Gary Carnegie, uh, on, actually when I interviewed him on the podcast, and he was talking about, you know, when you experience something that you've never seen before, it, it opens you up to the possibilities. Mm -hmm. So he was like, you know, grew up in the hood. So he started this nonprofit where I think they're called father figures mm -hmm. or something like mentors. that. Mentors. Yeah, they're mentors, father mentors. But they're all like, I think they have to make over like 300,000 a year or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And they take kids from the inner city out to like the nice area. So they let them experience, you know, driving in these nice cars, going to like uh, a nice football game, but with like people that are in business that look like them, mm -hmm. but that are like doing something completely Representation different. Representation matters. Yeah. And it kind of opens mm -hmm. up their horizon. Like, oh, damn. So I don't have to be a drug dealer, you know? Yeah. Or I don't have to, like, do this. I, I could do other stuff. It's I don't know I could do that. Like Other possibilities. Yeah. And um, that's all it really takes to break a paradigm yeah. is get some new experiences. So it's very important to, to do that. Break up the routine, you break know? Break up the routine. So the way that I personally evolve in everything that I do is by constantly doing something slightly different you know and i learn what i need from the moment and then i use it on the next one you know that's what like mixed martial arts is you, you take a bit of everything and then it's like you're a machine now you want to wrestle okay let's wrestle you want to fucking punch me and kick me like, okay let's punch and kick like wherever it goes i'm ready you know so that's kind of how I, I like to live my life yeah, and I think that the word that we both keep leaning into because I heard you doing it when you were out here and then I want a tattoo of it. Oh, is surrender. The, word, the surrender, right? And I yeah. think that that's been both of our reoccurring stepping into themes, yeah. right? Of in different aspects. Of yeah. Surrendering for me, and it might, I don't know if it resonates with you in the same way, but for me, surrendering is not like I surrender to you, I bow down. It's surrendering into trust and leaning into faith. And yeah. surrendering into the next step and trusting your instincts and surrendering of not resisting. Like I keep imagining the Chinese um, finger traps yeah, and the more you pull, the more you feel trapped yeah. and stuck yeah. versus leaning into it, surrendering the muscles and mm -hmm. it falls off. Right. Yeah. So for me, the surrendering of my business in the sense of like, I have a big vision. We've talked multiple things about what my vision looks like and yeah. how we want to build, but it's the surrendering into one step at a time, one, one goal at a time, one movement at a time, but having yeah. the bigger picture to know where I'm going <laughs> Yeah. and trusting whatever path I'm leaning into is what serves yeah, was, space. You know, I was going to ask you like, what does surrender mean to you? But you, yeah, you, you answered I jumped it. in it. <laughs> Tele you're, you're telekinesis right there. Telepathically, you read my <laughs> mind, you know? Yeah, like to me, when I say surrender, um, the way I see it is that all you can do is all you can do. Yeah. You know, at one point, you have to have faith in the process of what you are doing. So I think the problem that, you know, I, I don't think I know. This is the problem that I had. Um, was I would be fearful in moments of my life that I didn't know what the outcome was going to be mm -hmm. because I didn't really prepare how I was supposed to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when you actually do the work that you're supposed to do, and then there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, that's like the equation that I coach with my either my therapy clients or my coaching clients is yeah. vision plus action yeah. equals the result. Yeah, like I, I was telling you as a kid, I suffered with a lot of uh, anxiety and depression. And I think they were kind of entwined together mm -hmm. because I have all these visions of, of accomplishing all these things. But then I would immediately be uh, attacked by my own fucking mind in the form of anxiety, crippling fucking panic attacks, you know, that would prevent me from doing the things that I wanted to do and I couldn't understand what it was. And then that led to a depression of not being able to, you know, do the things that I wanted to do. But through experiences and through life, I figured out the solution, you know, for me anyways, I don't know what the solution for other people are, but uh, part of that is 
breaking those paradigms, you know, that yeah. I had. So it's kind of crazy how we're here today, to be honest, because uh, I've gone through a lot of changes in the last like couple of weeks, you know, I'm like fucking like I was telling you. <laughs> Uh, like if I'm a if I'm a Pokemon, I'm like evolving, uh, you know, from Pikachu to like doo -doo 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 to the next one, like super fast. So for people that are watching, they're like tripping out, like what the fuck is this dude going through? What is he, what is happening? But in my mind, I know exactly what's what's going on, right? So you're kind of a big part of that because you are. Um, I kind of see you like uh, almost like a guide. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know well, thanks. if that makes any sense. A guide in what way? Remember I was telling you that you have to have certain people to protect you from yourself? Yeah. So you're that. Okay, got it. <laughs> you protect me from myself. I'm more of like you're conscious in a way. Yeah, you know, because there's... <laughs> There's moments when you're like on the edge of the cliff wanting a fucking jump. Mm -hmm. And then you have your conscience, your mm -hmm. inner conscience tell you, yeah, don't do that. That's yeah. stupid. Let's, let's <laughs> take one step back, rethink it. Yeah. Give you back the power, but like, yeah. let's rethink another So view. because I'm evolving so fast, I'm pushing the boundaries on everything. You are. Everything I'm fucking pushing about. I'm pushing my body through the boundaries. I'm pushing my mind. I'm pushing like everything to see where's the limit and it's a dangerous thing right but it's also how you grow you know so you need people like i called you a guy but it could easily been a coach a trainer uh, a mentor system. a support system like even in mm -hmm. in fighting you have coaches that are like, like they'll correct your form They'll tell you you're fucking up here. Like you could do this better. Like they observe things that you can't see. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're that, like you observe things that I can't see that are going to hurt me in the long run, you know? And I've been kind of getting more and more of these people into my life and it's kind of helped. It's, it's really uh, awesome actually. <laughs> well, because you're open to receiving it, right? It's, yeah. It's more about part of the surrender, right? Of allowing certain people to come into your life. Again, we have to bear out and weave out the weasels and the people that we can actually trust because Stupid there will weasels. be people in there that we're going to come and manipulate so you yeah. have to really that's where the intuition and the trust and self comes in yeah but i want to say the same thing but in a different context for you you've shown up in my life in a way where you've had me see things differently and challenge my boundaries in a healthy way mm -hmm. in the sense of career and getting out of my comfort zone and just being like, it's okay, you're scared, but do it anyways. Like lean in, yeah. you know? So yeah, that's funny. Cause I, I felt the same for you. <laughs> like I pulled my strength from you. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like I quit my job uh, mm -hmm. like a month ago, you know, and I've been thinking about it for a while. Mm -hmm. And I really, I don't think I've really talked about it on camera. Um, you know, that, the reasoning behind it other than kind of some encrypted shit, you know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. but uh, I think right now is a perfect time to talk about it. Um, like I felt that in order for me to accomplish my goals, I needed to be free, right? Like to move how I needed to move. If I needed to go to a shoot, if I needed to go here, if I needed to go there, if I needed to... I felt like I have enough responsibility in myself and in my jobs that I can be trusted, right? Mm -hmm. And when I feel that my value is not um, being appreciated, then I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> you know? Like, then I don't need you, you know? Um, so I felt that my job was kind of preventing me from my fulfilling my, my true purpose in life. But it played a very important role for a certain period of my life. It did. And it taught me a lot of valuable lessons. And uh, I was able to build a lot of relationships that were valuable and still are and I still care about. But uh, life goes on. 
Well, you've outgrown it, right? Your soul yeah. is ready for something new, and and I needed a new shell. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly. Like, you grew yeah. out. Yeah. That's, yeah. We yeah. we talked about that, right? When you quit, and I had said that it was like a box with many doors. Mm -hmm. That was like. Yeah, you did say that. Keeping you in this containment that yeah. you needed to break free from, because yeah, yeah, it was great. It was a great job, you know, but that's not what your main focus was, that's not where your passion really lied. Yeah. And so it was keeping you safe. Mm -hmm. And you no longer needed that safety anymore in that sense. And you knew you were capable. Yeah. You're capable of so mm. many things and you're just, yeah. you're a creator, so. Yeah, I just had, uh, I really left with nothing other than my vision mm -hmm. and my belief in myself mm -hmm. and uh, knowing my strengths, you know? So I knew and I know that everything that I'm doing is gonna come to fruition, right? Because I'm putting in the work and uh, I know what I'm doing. So it's not like a, there was this term that's used in prisons and in like gang culture where, where they call it like uh, burning out, mm -hmm. you know, or kind of like in drug culture too, is when a person will essentially claim defeat. And the way that they claim defeat is that they kamikaze their life. They kill themselves mm -hmm. or they destroy their own life like a hell Mary to death, essentially. Mm -hmm. And the way they do that is if they're drug addicts, they'll just start to do a bunch of drugs, a bunch of drugs, a bunch of drugs until they overdose and die. And everybody around her was like an Amy Winehouse. She was a burnout. She crashed out. She's a dummy, you know, like she just drank herself to death. Uh, or there's criminals that, you know, go into prison for a DUI and then they go to prison and they stab somebody in there and then now they're in life, their life, for the rest of their life in prison, they crash out, you know? It's a reckless way of destroying your own life. And that is not what I'm doing whatsoever. No, I don't think that's what you're doing. Uh, I am strategically making decisions to cut off things. All right. Uh, oh, I was saying about business. Off? So it's really scary to have this comfort of your box, right? This foundation, like a job and security of a income and a salary and benefits to leap and go into your own business or your own career because you don't have that same cushion, same comfort zone. Yeah. And I think that's the scariest part of taking the leap and I asked you after, and this is the biggest part, I knew you were making the right decision, mm -hmm. is when I said, how do you feel after? Do you regret it or do you feel relieved? Mm -hmm. And do you remember what your response was? No. You said, I feel free and I feel relieved. Mm -hmm. There was no fear anymore. Yeah. Yeah. The fear was all right before. And I think that's so important that this is kind of... What I coach and I tell my clients is you're going to always feel fear yeah. right before you do something that matters. Mm -hmm. You need that part to really like push you into it because you know that's something that's guiding you to the right thing. Fear in the sense of like, oh my God, I'm terrified. I don't want to do this versus like, I really want this and I desire it, but I'm terrified. Two totally different kind of things. Yeah. Safety, fear, and like, I'm ready for this, but I'm afraid of the unknown. Yeah. I think people should anyways be able to understand the difference between like, you know, the fear of jumping off a cliff and the fear of like pursuing your goals. But sometimes <laughs> they can feel so similar. Yeah. Right? That fear can feel the exact same as if they're jumping off right. a cliff. So some, that's why it stops a lot of people because I just they thought can't about discern it. through it. Yeah, I was thinking like, you know, people trying to like climb a career or, you know, lose some weight or some shit. But mm -hmm. then I thought about it, like it could be because some people's goals are to like, you know, let's say fight mm -hmm. and it is a fear that you might get beat up, you know, you yeah. get, might get hurt or, but yeah, I guess you guys can see how <laughs> you can confuse the two types of fear, but yeah, um, don't be reckless, but exactly. have the courage to go after what you you say you want 
you know like if i say i want to do certain things then i should be proactively doing those scary things that come along with it yeah and we have different approaches to the leaps so yeah i set myself up very methodically and like <laughs> i worked three jobs and i like before i even transitioned from my county job i was already working part-time and private practice and then i leaped yeah. into my own company right so i had a action plan on how to get there you already had that building in your head for quite some time yeah. and you pulled the trigger without really much of a mm -hmm. safety net which could be even more terrifying mm -hmm. but you still had that faith in yourself that you were going to land which you are completely yeah so i i did it to be honest um Methodically, not methodically. I did it. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Impulsively. Impulsively. <clears throat> I'm a bit impulsive. Yes, I know. From That's time to I time, I'll be like, "Fuck this, I'm done." Yeah. You know? <laughs> Peace. And uh, but I think um, I think that a lot of the things that I do impulsively, I was gonna do anyways. You know what I mean? Well, you, like you said, you had been thinking about it for quite some time. That's what yeah. I mean. You were methodical, but yeah. you pulled the trigger. Yeah, really no, quick. but I, the word I was looking for was that. Impulsive. Impulsive. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'll pull the trigger right away, which, again, f for people like me, can be dangerous. That's mm -hmm. why I need guides from time to time to kind of be there to be like, that's not a right move. We should wait. And then I, I listen. I pay attention. I'm like, right, cool. Let's do that. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're right. Like, uh, you know, it, it does, it should bring more fear, but it didn't for me for mm -hmm. some strange reason. Well, because you knew you were doing the right thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I think another reason why is because um, of my family mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a really, really good family, mm -hmm. strong family, you know, mm -hmm. where, like, like, I see people that are homeless on the streets, and I think automatically they probably don't have good family, you know? And I might be wrong. Yeah, not necessarily. Because there's people that want to be homeless, I know, because I had a couple of friends that yeah. said, like, their dad was homeless, and he yeah. wanted to be homeless. Like, they'd try to bring him in, and he I would say no. I have clients that... Their parents are choosing to be homeless. And yeah, try to so get them I understand. I understand it. that it's not always. Yeah. But there are a lot of them that don't have anybody. Yes, one hundred percent. And <laughs> I'm like, like, dude, like I, I take a step back and I look at the bigger picture, mm -hmm. and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, um, there's absolutely nothing that can go wrong, you know, like, and 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 this is something that I learned from actually art. He's like, or nothing was Gary, like before you make a big decision, ask yourself two questions. And they said, they say, the first thing is what's the worst thing that can happen? Mm -hmm. That's the first question you ask yourself. And I thought about it, you know, mm -hmm. I did think about this before I, you know, quit my job. What's the worst thing that can happen? You know, okay, well, um, losing my income, I'm losing my health insurance. So let's say the worst thing that can happen is I get cancer you know the next day and uh and then i can't work because i'm sick and then i can't afford my fucking cancer medication because i don't have a job and i don't have insurance and then the second question you ask yourself is can i deal with that what's the worst thing that could happen thought about it in my head and can i deal with that and immediately i said yeah i could deal with that and i said do it <laughs> you know so i think if you put yourself in the position where like What's the worst that can happen to me? And can I deal with that? Like, can I maneuver through it? How would I, what would I do? How would I handle it? You know, I've seen my demise a million times in my head. You know, like, do you ever watch um, the Marvel movies? Of course, my brother is a big Marvel. Oh, that's right. He has a Marvel com a company of Yeah, comic we should books. have him on the podcast one day. Oh my God, he would, you got... <sighs> Yeah, so, um, you know, when Thanos <laughs> uh, was conquering, getting all the rings to destroy half of the population, you know, they went through a bunch of simulations to figure out which was which the way. Which was the way. Mm -hmm. Right? So in my head, I do that. Mm. Before I make a decision, I'm like... Well, because you're very analytical. So <laughs> yeah. you're very impulsive, yeah. but you are extremely analytical. Like, you're always in your head. Yeah. And I can tell, like, are you... 
upstairs? And you're like, yep, I'm there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, because you're, that's, that's just my, how you... That's my war room. Yeah, like you talked about the void. That's where you go when you think. Yeah, that's my void. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You know, I never did that with anybody before, what I did out there mm. with you. Mm, I you appreciated know. it. Yeah, because <laughs> I guess I can share it. Um, because I do a lot of very odd things to people. It might seem odd and they don't understand what's going on. So I told you, like, I like to isolate myself from the world so that I could create my peace mm -hmm. and then my, like, my process. <clears throat> so I tried to explain it to you the best way that I could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I told you, like, hey, come here. I, what did I say at first? You said, hey, come here. I want to invite you into a thing. And then you're like, um... Who are you? What are you made of? And I would say, okay, I'm the. Oh, okay. I'm a I remember now. I remember now. I'm a, I remember now. I like, said, take that away. This is what I said. I said, mm -hmm. there's something about you that you can't get rid of. The camera went off. Huh? Oh, yeah, I remember now. So I said, <laughs> um, um, there's something about you that you can't get rid of. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. <sighs> and then you're like, what's that? And I said, come here. And I said, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. um, I said, I can take off my hat. And I took off my hat. I can take off my glasses. I take off my ring. I can take off my clothes. You can strip me naked. And I said, what do I have? And you're like, you your have soul. your soul. I was all, take it away. And I'm like, what else? Like, you have this. You have that. You have your, your, your family, your, your dog. You have your property. You have all of that. I say, take it all away, like deeper, keep taking it. And then I said, like my healer and Soul. my empathy yeah. and all of that. And you're like, take that away. I was yeah. like, okay, well then <laughs> there's nothing left. It's just the void. Yeah, I said, there. I said, that's it, the void. I said, that's where I create. So the way that I create, you know, everything that I do is from that place of silence mm -hmm. and that place of nothingness where everything's a possibility. You know, and that, that was like my way of kind of expressing to you why I might seem a little odd at times. <laughs> I know? don't see you as odd. So yeah. So. You think I do, but I, <laughs> I wouldn't be hanging out with you if I had that judgment. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that, yeah. that was, uh, you know, I never did, I never did that with anybody. I never even thought about explaining myself to people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, cause sometimes as people go in with this resistance or preconceived yeah. notions, yeah. around things and I think that's a great indication of like you just gotta do you you know what's that tattoo you said you saw on some girl oh uh, yeah. you are you and you and I am me or something it like that it was uh I am E you are you you are you I am me yeah that's what it was and like I, I wanted to know what it meant so like I tapped her and I said hey what is that because I saw it was a girl and then her friend, they both had the same tattoo. Mm. <clears throat> so I asked her, what does that mean? And she said, you are you and I am me. And then she just turned away. <laughs> and I was like, damn, okay. And I thought about it, I was like, oh, I get it. Like, you are you, I am me. Like, don't judge don't me. Don't judge me. Don't critique me. Yeah. Don't, I am you, me, you are you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, I get it now. So, yeah. Nothing else to be but yourself. Yeah. And and this is one thing I with my clients and my coaching clients, like the biggest thing I because there's a lot of anxiety, social anxiety around perse being perceived a certain way. Mm -hmm. Right. Or they're judging me or how they're going to look at me or yeah. what, what are they going to do? Right. Yeah. And so the biggest thing that I coach my clients is. They're thinking about that same thing that you're thinking about. Yeah. They're not even thinking about. <laughs> How like they're thinking about how you're judging them, not how you're, they're judging you. Yeah, it's funny. I used to do that as well with because I I was a personal training coach, mm -hmm. and you know there would be people that come into the gym that are very heavy, heavy. You know, they're very fat, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they feel that everybody's judging them at the gym because they're so big. You know, but most people in the gym are just judging themselves, like you're saying, like they're. Like even the biggest, most muscular guy that goes into the gym looks in the mirror and he's like, fuck, I'm fat, you know, or I look this. Like <laughs> we all do it. Mm -hmm. We all do it. We'd be like, ah, and it's like, you're always chasing this uh, vision in your head that you can never get, get, you know, like even like elite 
level bodybuilders, you know, go through moments of, you know, like not being happy with, and they're not worrying about everybody else. They're like, are you kidding me? And the other part <laughs> is it's a disadvantage to compare yourself to other people because, again, yeah. bi different body bubbles, right? Different type of body aesthetics, yeah. different genes. Like, you were raised differently than your brother and sister, literally. That's what we always say. You were not raised in the same family than your siblings because mm -hmm. we're all different. And if we compare ourselves to Johnny or to Susie yeah, or to whoever, like, it's not fair <laughs> because it's unrealistic. <clears throat> yeah. It's like... What are you really comparing yourself to? You have nothing yeah. in common in that upbringing. Yeah, you might have some things in common, but the whole foundation is individual. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, this is like things that people deal with in On their day-to-day -day life, yeah. you know? And uh, that's why I think what you do is very important <laughs> in guiding people through, because to be honest, most, Humans don't really know how to utilize their emotions to, you know, live a better life. To empower them. You know, because you can live your whole life a piece of shit and die and that's fine. Yeah. You know, and you can live a life full of misery and that's fine too. People do that all the time. But I don't want to live that. You know? I don't either. I want to be able to learn from my own mistakes, learn from my generational mistakes and correct them the best way that I can. You know, you, you, you play the cards that are, that are dealt to you yeah. to the best of your ability. Like I was telling you when I was out there about how, you know, amateur fighters sometimes that I've noticed is that when they first fight, they, they throw all of their arsenal right away and they exhaust themselves from, they deplete themselves physically like they're just too tired to even punch or kick anymore and then they lose their fight through their conditioning because they are kind of blowing their load you know from from the get-go whereas someone that might be more seasoned will use their energy smarter when they need to they'll be aggressive when they need to surrender and and retreat they surrender retreat when they need to whatever they need to do they're going to do their effective so that, they might be more out of shape than the young grasshopper, you know, which is why wisdom and um, knowledge is so important. That's why you have the sensei, you know, you have the master, the wizard, because they might be old, but they have information that you don't have that's going to help you evolve and become your best version. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, I don't even know what the hell I'm, I'm talking about now, but... It all, it, it all, all comes into the yeah yeah, and I and I love what I do. I I love, I love being a therapist and guiding people and supporting them. Yeah, you know, but I also again am. St people th have this misconception that therapists aren't people. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> well, like they ha like when you have a client, there's this idealization. Like the therapist knows has all this information, right? And we have to remind we're human too. We're growing. We're you know and like. We have mm -hmm. to humanize ourselves because it's oh. the hierarchy role, you know. Yeah. But the reality is we're human too. We have Oh, I see what you're saying. Like you know? they feel like you don't have any problems. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> But you don't. I do. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we 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 all have something going on. <laughs> Life is never gonna be perfect. I'm your only problem. You are a big problem. <laughs> You're a big pain in my ass sometimes. Let's just be real. <laughs> I'm your only problem. That's your second problem right there. Yeah, that's Shitting yeah. all over your carpet. <laughs> Shitting on the carpet. Pissing on the carpet. And pissing on the carpet. Well, that's the simple stuff. He's Eating a the cat food. <laughs> Becoming a little gordito. Oh, yeah. You got to stop eating us. <laughs> oh, nobody's grown. We're both cutting. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's, yeah. We all have issues, we all have our barriers, and I think that we have to, we're always going to be evolving and growing mm -hmm. all the way to our last breath on this planet. Yeah. It's just part of life. <sighs> yeah. Every evolving. <clears throat> so, the biggest end note I want to kind of put into that space is don't give up. Really think about what will light you up when you get out of bed, because you do not have to get out of bed and be miserable about going to work. That's a big one. And life is gonna have its ups and downs. And like you said, like I'm enjoying this happy moment, 
right? You yeah. have to be grateful for the happy moments and the peaceful experiences that we experience because we will have our downfalls again. And I think that we, it's just, again, the surrender of mm -hmm. what is next because we're evolving one layer at a time, one onion layer at a time, right? We are getting to the next steps of evolution within our soul. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an onion. You are an onion. And I'm unfolding. Like, <sighs> to get out the skin. <laughs> What's sunny? He's more like an, he's more like a potato. <laughs> he's evolving too. He's a shrimp. He's yeah, so he's coming out of his little shell. Yeah, yeah Sonny's awesome. <sighs> Look at him. <laughs> he lives the best life out of all of us. He does. Look at him. Very blessed. <laughs> so, what is Open Mind up to? What's up to? What, what are you up to these days? So, this trip is really for me to close out and catch up on my personal accounts and paperwork so that way I can really look into like I keep saying this but really sitting down with my accountant and hiring new people because yeah so is your goal January 1st to bring on employees or when are you going to start probably to, February February probably when we come back okay. from what are you looking for initially is it uh just therapist or are you going to have like no secretary initially, or something? eventually I want a secretary but I already have someone in mind uh -huh. who will be great at it um but I just want to start with like two to three therapists. Okay. And really get that networking of a bunch of clients, cash pay clients is really yeah. what I'm looking for. Cash pay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so really that's my intention and then building from there. And then we have discussed creating a program yeah. that you can do on your own personal time and then also have a one-on-one -on -one coaching component. Um, That's right, because you have both the uh, therapy mm -hmm. business and, and your the coaching, coaching business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did talk about putting together an online course. Yeah. Uh, where you can have your coaching program on there. Yep. And you can have either one-on-one -on -one coaching with people, or you can have the online course that would yeah. include a bunch of different tools that people can utilize to, you know, help them build their business or build whatever they're trying to build um, well even we're and we're gonna do one with self-esteem that's right right so mm -hmm. we're and we're he has a lot of knowledge and resources and so we're going to collaborate on that and really create yeah. that um so that's really in the next phase um yeah, we're that will be the, available um, for people who don't want to do like the actual one-on-one -on -one therapy every yeah. week um this will give you kind of like a little booster um, of yeah. self and really leaning in and giving the knowledge and the information. And yeah, because I, I think, um, you know, when people think of therapy, they think of like, oh, I'm going to sit down and just tell this person all my shit and then they're just going to listen and then tell me my, I have problems with my mom <laughs> or some shit, you know? It's way more complex. And, uh, yeah. you know, what it is, it's essentially, you know, just teaching you some... Skills. fundamentals and some skills and yeah. how to fucking deal with life yep um and because it was funny because I, I never had a therapist till recently I'm you know in my mid-30s yeah so <clears throat> when I saw the therapist a lot of the stuff that she was telling me I already kind of knew mm. because I had studied a lot on psychology on you know development personal development uh, on all kinds of stuff and it kind of all blended in with the therapy. Mm -hmm. So it made a lot of sense. A lot of the things made a lot of sense really quickly for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I already knew that. Yeah. You know? And then it probably allowed you to be more on the emotional component. Yeah. Because you didn't need to be so logical on in the information. or We call it psychoeducation. Yeah. Um, you would have been able to even more express more of what was actually emotionally probably coming up for you. I don't know. I wasn't in your therapy session. So. Yeah. But it's, it is a process of coaching and coping yeah. skills and psychoeducation <clears throat> right. and yeah so there's gonna be the a bunch of uh, tools. tools and he's gonna be the resource guy where he knows where these theories or yeah where all the tools, tools are. have come from yeah yeah because um, like I, there was like only even we were talking about the other day about um because uh, i studied a lot of um inventors yep. and how uh, Thomas Edison used to go into his mind where he would create things mm -hmm. and so did, you know, a lot of brilliant physicists and, you know, 
scientists, you name it, Albert Einstein went into his mind, you know, to find the theory of uh, what is the relativity. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people found all these answers in either a dream state or in a meditative state. Um, so the, re the, the resources for all these little tools I can get. Yeah. Like, you know, and I didn't know that kind of the stuff. sleep foundation. I can teach you like, uh, ways of how to relax your body and, yep. and get into the REM sleep. You know, there's yep. studies behind that and we'll link all the resources, yep. uh, to the course. So that's, that's really the collaboration that you're going to get the psychotherapy kind of component from me yeah. of experiences. And then you're going to get the actual concrete resources yeah. and factual <laughs> things that I don't even know that yeah. he has this world of knowledge about. So yeah. stay tuned for that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a really good supportive piece. Just, again, my vision, my goal is to heal as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. So if that even creates more of a extended outsource, even better. Yeah. I want to leave this world better than I left it or came into it, you know? Same, same. So, yeah. Same, same, but different. <laughs> yeah, we so my, this. like, your goal is to heal people. Yeah. And my goal is to turn their dreams inspire. into reality. Yeah. You know, to so inspire them, but also guide them and help them. Mm -hmm. You know, so, like, I, I tell people all the time, like, I'm a collector of interesting individuals. I love people. And facts, by the way. And facts. I love meeting <laughs> people. You know, I love networking. I love, I'm deeply curious in people's lives and why they are the way they are and their talents and their gifts. And like, I find like, Oh, I think that's where you got that from. Mm -hmm. So I find all these interesting people in my life and I have this ability of like connecting them to like other people. Like, Oh, hey, look now, Kith, <laughs> you know, like two birds, <laughs> two little birdies, Kith. Now create. Go. Yeah. you know, and, um, and part of that is, is to help them, achieve what they want in life so that's why i say your wish is my command i tell people yeah. people think i'm crazy but i'm like i tell them i'm a genie whatever yeah. you want i can give you they'll create it you know i can if i can't do it myself i can find someone for you but i tell them but be careful because if it's really what you want it's a double-edged sword whatever it is that you want there's an equal and opposite reaction you know like i i tell people this like the story of the genie he gives you three wishes. Your wish is his command. Whatever you tell him, he has to give it to you. But there's always a double-edged sword. So people say, my first wish is I want to be wealthy. And he gives them all the money in the world. And then they buy some fancy car and they crash and they die or something. Or they become obsessed with money and they, you know, die miserable old people. It's a double-edged sword, you know. Or they'll be like, I want beauty. And, you know, they get all this Botox and shit in their face. And but they look nobody like, likes them. Yeah, nobody likes them or they're horrible. Yeah. Or, you know what, I, I want, you know, sex. I want to have any sex with any woman or man I want or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they're just these nasty things. You know? Mindless, no <laughs> right? connection. So everything has a double-edged sword. So you have to give and take. So, like, if I want to be an actor, okay. Are you sure? Is that what you want? Like, all right, your wish is my command. I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to do this, I want to do that. There's gonna come a lot of pain with it, with whatever yeah. you want. Even when it's good or bad, you know? You can say, I want nothing. Your wish is my command, that's also a misery. <laughs> so you gotta be careful how you, what you, have you wish to, for. Exactly. Be clear. You, you have to take reins wah, wah, of your life and then make decisions that you want for your family and for what's in you, you know? Like at the end of the day, what do you have? You have just you and your family, you know? That's what matters, like we are saying, like we can have all the things in the world, but if you don't have those experiences with the people that you love, you really don't have anything. So yeah, I'm in that place in my life now where I'm like focusing really, really hard on creating the vision in my mind you know bringing it to life and um this weekend i'm catching up on a bunch of work i am creating the foundation to a lot of the business entities that i have going on so i have uh dreams to reality uh production which is going to be 
uh, producing my film. And right now I'm writing the script and everything mm -hmm. for that. Plus I'm doing acting uh, mm -hmm. classes because I'm going to audition for one of the roles. Um, the podcasting is still going. Um, you know, still doing the, the photo, video, yeah, all the of that. Videography. Videography, uh, shooting commercials. commercials, shooting music videos. All of that is still yeah. going full force. Do you force. need any videography needs or yeah. just... And then I'm working Getting better with, and better. I'm, I'm working with Art Martinez again <laughs> in the insurance business. Oh, that's right, yeah. So I'm getting all my licenses back, um, reinstating my real, real estate license, reinstating my... Life insurance. Life and health insurance. My, I'm going to get my investment licenses back. Uh, all of that stuff. And uh, I'm going to eventually finance all of my projects with the money that I make from the uh, financial services industry. And then I'm going to reinvest that into real estate mm -hmm. and then reinvest that back into my business. And it's going to be a, a, a machine, a machine and a thriving business that's going to turn anyone's vision into reality because people need that. There's musicians out there that want to be heard, but they don't have the means and they don't have the resources. I want to be the person with the resources and the means. You know, and there's people that want to create movies that have ideas. There's great actors and actresses out there that don't have the means or they don't have the network or the connections. connections yeah. So I, I want to be at the position where I can help anyone that wants to mess with me, <laughs> you know. And right now, whoever's joining as I'm growing is going to benefit long term. You know, because... Because that friends and family discount only lasts for so long. That's true. Raising my prices of January 1st. Same. 10,000%. That's, that's also what we're working... <laughs> we got a lot we got to handle tonight. Yeah. 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 So. So, yeah. So, the sun has set now. Yep. You guys had a beautiful sunset. Uh, we made that intentional for you guys to have that view. Yeah, we said let's share with the world yeah. the beauty of uh, Ventura, California. California sunset with a cute little puppy little sleeping pup, pup. Um, and two universes psh, clashing and talking about some stuff that's going on right now. Just life. Life. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. You know, we, we didn't really, we just came on. We didn't have any topic. Yeah, but we're like, well, we want to shoot something we haven't yeah. shot in a while. And it's also, you know, now it's a yeah. tax write-off. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, because it's business. But yeah, it's, it's, it's business, remember? But bitness. again, bit, it, bitness. 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 <laughs> but we appreciate you guys taking the time to view. Hit the like button, share. Um, if you find any value, if you have any questions, let us know. You know, that's what we're here for. Awesome, guys. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Bye, Bye guys. Sweet. Baby. Who's that little bubble? Who's that little bubble? Hey. Pound it. Pound it. it. <laughs>